What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to change a timing belt, water pump, tensioners, idlers on a Honda Pilot, Honda Ridgeline, Honda Odyssey, and a bunch of other different stuff. So this basic procedure that I'm gonna show you guys, obviously I'm working on a Honda Pilot, but this basic procedure applies to a bunch of different Honda models as far as how the engine's timed and things like that. Um, I'll put a list on the screen of all the different models that this covers, but it's probably gonna cover the entirety of the screen. Um, it's basically every Honda 3 liter, 3.5, 3.7 V6 from about 2003 all the way to present day. So like I said, there's a ton of different models that this procedure is gonna cover, but specifically, I'm working on a 2011 Honda Pilot. I'm gonna say the new Honda Pilots are gonna be virtually identical to this one. So with all that said, I'm gonna get this thing pulled inside, get it up on the lift, and uh, we're gonna get started. All right, so this stuff over here is what I'm gonna be installing in this video. Um, this is a full timing belt you know, component setup. So timing belt, two idlers, uh, a tensioner, and a water pump in this box. Um, the other thing I'm gonna be installing is a new thermostat and thermostat gasket. Uh, just because the vehicle's 10 years old, has 100,000 miles on it, and the coolant is already gonna be drained, so really, I'm already in there, so why not throw another $10 at it and just put a new thermostat in it and never have another problem for another 10 years. Um, this stuff over here is gonna be some of the special tools required for this job. Uh, first of which is the crankshaft holding tool. Uh, they're relatively cheap. They're 15 to 20 bucks, uh, depending on you know who you're buying it from. But really, you're going to need this to uh, to crank or tighten the uh, to tighten the crank pulley bolt when you go back together. Um, this over here is one of those special sockets for Hondas for their crank pulleys. And if you look, it's like a super thick wall impact socket. Um, it's just supposed to help get that crank bolt out. Um, really getting the crank bolt out is probably going to be the hardest part about this entire job. Um, so with that said, like I said, I'll have links in the description to all this stuff if you guys are uh, going to be doing one of these yourself. Um, with that said, the first thing that I'm going to do is try and get this crank pulley out and off because if I can't get the crank pulley off, there's no reason to go draining the coolant or doing anything else because you can't go any further. All right, first thing we gotta do to get this crank pulley, gonna be 22 millimeter socket, remove the wheel. So right there, as you can see, is your crank pulley, but I'm gonna pull this splash shield just completely out of the, the inner fender here, completely, just for the sake of the video. Um, you guys don't have to uh, remove the whole thing. You can you know, just loosen some of these this corner and just pull it out of the way, but it's gonna make it easier for me to you know, shoot the video with the whole thing out of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this whole inner splash shield. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the serpentine belt to do that. This is a 19 millimeter hex right here I'm pointing to. Put a ratchet on that and then loosen it and then what that'll do is it'll compress that gas strut so you can remove the serpentine belt. All right, now for the crank bolt. Now this is a standard 19 millimeter socket and as you guys can see you know fits no problem now the socket that i showed you in the beginning of the video is this so as you guys can see there's a pretty distinct difference between the two of these um the way that this one works is when the impact gun hits this socket it has more inertia as far as how it how hard it turns compared to this one because it's so much heavier. So that's why this one works so much better than a standard socket. So like I said, I'll link these in the description for you guys that you know just want to zip this out with an impact. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're probably gonna need a cheater bar and a breaker bar to be able to get that uh, crank bolt out of there. 
Just for my own entertainment, this is a Milwaukee high torque impact with an eight amp battery. And I think it's like three quarters of the way full. Yeah. So I wanna see with a standard socket, will it remove a Honda crank bolt? I'm gonna say that answer is no. <laughs> All right, so now I'll use the upgraded socket. See if there's uh, any difference. Well, that was uneventful. So there you go, guys. That is why you spend an extra 20 bucks on that socket because it makes uh, getting the crank bolt out com completely painless. That just pulls straight off of there. There you go. Go ahead and remove that ring. Set that off to the side. Set that with the balancer. Because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to put the balancer back on and forget that. Because uh, the torque spec on this bolt when we go back together is uh, rather tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this bolt back into the crankshaft, and I'm just going to use that bolt as more or less just a turning tool to uh, turn the engine over to uh, get the timing marks lined up. All right, while we got this thing up in the air. I'm gonna take this bolt out and this bolt out, and that'll remove the serpentine belt tensioner. Uh, top bolt is 18 millimeter, bottom bolt is 12 millimeter. All right, so now I got it down on the ground. Uh, you know, I got the hood open. First thing we're gonna have to do is remove this cover. A couple quarter turn screws and that lifts off. And obviously, you know, we're gonna be working over here in this corner over here, so the power steering pump has to get removed and just set off to the side. Um, there's a motor mount down here that uh, we're gonna to have to remove as well. Um, but first, I'm gonna blow some of this garbage off the top of this thing just so everything's somewhat clean. All right, first thing I'm gonna go after, we have the power steering pump. So, this is a suction line coming off the reservoir. We're gonna have to unhook that. And get this tucked up out of the way. That was only a small environmental hazard. Let me get some rags and clean this whole thing up. So the bolts in the power steering pump are going to be 12 millimeter. Um, I'm gonna do as best I can as far as giving you guys the location of the bolts on this stuff, but as you guys can see, you know, this, this stuff's rather buried in here and I can get my head in here and just barely see it, but as far as getting the camera in here, it may happen, it may not, but um, I'll B-roll whatever I can as far as the bolt hole locations to give you guys an idea of, you know, where this stuff is bolted on from. All right, so as you guys can see, I got the power steering pump sitting on top of the intake. Uh, there's one of the bolts here, and then there's another bolt uh, down here on the bottom. Both of them are basically on the bottom of the pump, so like I said, they were kind of hard to record, but uh, you guys uh, get the idea. So, with that said, the next thing I gotta remove is gonna be the uh, timing belt covers for each cylinder on the, each bank up, up on the top. Uh, they're just 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, taken out. So that's gonna be for the rear. So those are all your bolt locations on the rear cover. Um, there's also a wiring harness that, you know, is held in here at the top. You got bolts here, 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 and here that hold the front cover on. So here's your bolts in the lower cover. There's uh, one here, one here, 
here, here, here, here, here. I mean, like I said, they all use the same bolt, so when you go back together, um, you literally cannot screw it up. All right, so at this point, this is what we're left with. Um, there's the belt that we need to change. There's the two idlers. You can just see the water pump and the tensioner back there. Um, but obviously, we have to get that motor mount out of the way. So before I lower this thing back down, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the, uh, the crank pulley as you guys look at right here. And if you look at 6 o'clock right there, there is a timing mark on the crank pulley. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that timing mark with that little arrow pointing down on the block. So I'm going to turn that 180 degrees, align the two marks, and then uh, we'll be able to you know, get this old belt off of here and get the new one on. All right, now at this point, this is when things kind of start to get critical as far as, um, you know, timing the motor. So what you want to do is roll the, the crankshaft over clockwise until the timing mark lines up on the crankshaft like I showed you guys just a minute ago. After you get that lined up, what you want to do next is come up to the top side of the motor and go over to this front camshaft. And you want to make sure that there's a number one on the sprocket and you want to make sure that number one is at the top so if you actually take a look at the edge of the camshaft here let's see if i can get this thing to focus so if you take a look at the end of the camshaft right here the number one's right here and just above the number one there's a mark on the cam sprocket that mark on the cam sprocket needs to line up with that boss on the engine block so if the engine, or I should say, if the cam is 180 degrees off because the camshaft rotates at half the speed of the crankshaft, the number five will be listed at the top and you need to do another complete rotation of the engine on the crankshaft pulley. So there's a timing mark there on the front cam and there's also a timing mark on the rear cam. So on the rear cam, if I can get this wiring harness out of the way, you can look there by the tip of my thumb and there is a mark on the pulley just like there is on the front that also needs to line up with that boss there on the engine block. So that's the easiest way to tell if the uh, the motor is in time when you go to uh, take everything apart. But like I said, just be certain that the number one on the front cam is at the 12 o'clock position before you remove the timing belt. If it's not at the 12 o'clock position, you need to rotate the crank sprocket one full revolution until the timing marks line up again, and then you should be in time at the top. All right, next thing we're gonna do after the motor is all in time is we're gonna remove the motor mount. Now to remove the motor mount, I have a floor jack and a block of wood on the bottom of the oil pan that is supporting the, uh, let's say the right half of the engine over here. So. That motor mount right there is what we're going to be removing. Um, basically, just put enough tension on it with the floor jack to get the weight off the motor mount so the bolts are easier to get out. Um, but yeah, once we get the, the motor mount out of the way, that basically concludes the major disassembly on this. All right, next thing we gotta go after is we gotta move, remove this half of the motor, motor mount. So there are three 17 millimeter bolts holding in the section of the motor mount that is underneath the uh, PCM here. So I'm using a long extension and a universal to, uh, to get down here. Hoping to uh, be able to get this thing out without removing the computer out of this thing. So 
So if you guys notice, I took the PCM loose. I think there were three or four uh, 10 millimeter bolts holding the PCM in. Uh, like I said, I just took those bolts out to uh, give me some wiggle room so I get this motor mount out of here. Hopefully there's enough room I can get this thing out of here. Oh, come on sucker, you're right there. So anyway, this is a motor mount that you need to remove. Um, like I said, it's underneath the computer. Kind of a pain to uh, record unless you want to remove the computer. And that mounts uh, kind of seen better days. In fact, yeah, that mount needs replaced. Looks like I gotta make a phone call. So yeah. It's a good time to uh, inspect your motor mounts while you're here because uh, that thing's shot. All right, so the last part of the motor mount is this bolt here. There's one up here by my finger, and there's one actually inside this hole here. The one inside this hole is why we had to remove the other half of the motor mount because there isn't enough room to slide the bolt all the way out. So this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, 14 millimeter, zip those three out, and then take this whole piece off. All right, at this point, you know, the motor mount's out of the way, everything's out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tensioner off. Now, realistically, you could just cut the belt once you have everything you know, lined up like it's supposed to be, and just, you know, pull the belt out that way. But either way, you're gonna have to remove the tensioner, so. So there's our tensioner out. The thing I'm gonna go after is gonna be this, uh, this idler up here. Looks like a 14 millimeter holding that idler in. So this is what's coming out of here. Obviously keep track of that bolt because you're not gonna find that at Lowe's or Home Depot. Keep track of that sleeve. Transfer it over to the new one. All right, so this last idler is also a 14 millimeter. And this one has Loctite on it. It's gonna fight me the whole way. Once you get that Loctited idler out of the way, you can go ahead and remove the old belt. Um, if you look on the bottom of the crank pulley, there is a, like a little bracket down there that kind of helps hold the belt in. Just try a little bit and you'll be able to wiggle it out, you know, no problem. You'll have the same thing up on the camshafts. Um, there's a little bracket like that to just try and hold the belt in. So you may have to uh, play with it a little bit to uh, get the belt out of there, but shouldn't be a huge deal. I'm gonna show you this as best as I can. Unfortunately, I told you guys, no good spot to put the camera. The next thing I'm gonna remove is a water pump. Without taking out my light. I knew that was gonna happen. So I'm gonna have to get out the hose. Unfortunately, when you drain the radiator, it doesn't really drain the block so much. Yeah, let's try this again. Hosed out most of my bay at this point. And I'm sure there's still more in there. You see right where I'm sticking that screwdriver? Uh, this water pump is actually leaking a little bit.
you know, obviously try not to uh, damage the, the ceiling surface on the water pump if you're going to go in here and pry like this. There we go. That's loose. That's out. All right, so what I'm going to do now real quick is I'm going to hose basically this whole area out. Um, I'm going to hit it with some degreaser, clean some of this up, do some of the staining, um, rinse all the coolant and everything off of here. You want everything nice and clean and dry when you go and put everything back together. So I'm going to do that off camera real quick. I will bring you guys back when I'm done. All right, so what do we learn? First of all, draining the radiator is a complete waste of time because you're still gonna get about another half a gallon of coolant out of the engine when you remove the water pump. So don't even waste your time draining the radiator to start with. Um, I'll probably leave it in there just because I'm sure there'll be somebody in the comments saying, you should have drained the radiator before you uh, remove the water pump. Uh, not so much, <laughs> big waste of time. So the other thing you guys might have noticed about this thing is it does not have the right coolant in it. It's supposed to have the Honda Type 2, the blue Honda coolant, the you know Asian coolant or whatever. It has like universal all makes all models in it. So I have to flush out the system in this thing. I'm just gonna use regular tap water. But before I you know go bolting anything back together, I'm leaving the, the hole for the water pump completely open. I'm gonna stick a garden hose in the radiator and just flush it right out the water pump hole and just basically just keep flushing it with clean water until I have clean water coming out of the block. I'm sure 95% of the old coolant is out of the block, but I have to do that before I can go back to the other. Um, one other thing before um, you know we go back together is I had to find concentrated blue Asian coolant um, the blue Asian coolant in concentrate form is not easy to find. Um, I found it online. It was like, I think like 25 bucks a gallon or something like that. Not exactly cheap, but if you're going to flush the system like I had, I had to do here, that's really the only way that you're going to get your uh, coolant to water ratio right is pour concentrate in it. Because like I said, I'm going to fill the block full of water. So it is what it is. Um, the other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, um, I'll probably do it off camera because it's it's literally two bolts, is I'm going to replace the thermostat. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the car's 10 years old. It's got 105,000 on it. I'm already in here. The coolant's already drained. Thermostats, I think like 10 or 15 bucks. They're pretty pretty inexpensive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before we uh, you know start bolting everything back together. So I'm going to flush everything out, put a new thermostat in it clean everything up as far as the, the water coming out of the, the block from the water pump hole. And uh, I'll bring you guys back in a second when uh, I'm actually ready to start bolting everything back on. All right, first component we go back together is gonna be the water pump. Dowels will pretty much hold that in place. Um, all the uh, 10 millimeter bolts are all the same, so where they where they go back in really doesn't matter. All right, on the new idler bearing, the side that sticks out a little bit that goes toward the block. The side that's recessed, you know, obviously faces you. It gets the longer bolt with fresh Loctite right up in that hole. Fresh Loctite on the bolt. All right, now we're gonna get our belt in place. So, I'm just gonna start the crank first. And get that in there just like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top side 
and you want to keep tension on this side of the belt at all times as you're routing it. So you want all your slack to end up on this side with the tensioner on it. Pull this tight as you're routing it up toward the top of the engine. You know, obviously I didn't record getting this thing in place because uh, quite frankly, I'm more worried about this one than uh, the one you guys are working on. Not trying to be a jerk, but just telling you how it is. So, like I said, you have to keep tension on this belt the whole way around, and you want all of your slack to end up down here in this hole. So, if you look down here, see this belt's nice and loose? That's where you're going to... Uh, bolt the tensioner bracket back on. So I'm gonna get this back up in the air and we'll bolt that tensioner on. All right, so now that our belt's routed, went ahead and bolted up the, uh, the tensioner and then we're gonna get the uh, tensioner arm bolted up into place. So as you guys are routing this belt, I cannot stress this enough, you can't have any slack between the crank pulley, the front cam pulley, under the water pump, or over to the rear camshaft. All of your slack has to end up on the bottom side between the rear cam and the bottom crank pulley where the tensioner will bolt up. So you want the tensioner to be taking all the slack out of the system. You don't want the slack in between any one of those sprockets. If you go to line this up and you cannot get that belt tight enough to basically stretch onto the camshaft, do not turn the camshaft with a wrench. I'm telling you that right now, because if you do, chances are you're not gonna be able to hold it in place because it's gonna snap to the next position. And if it snaps next to the next position hard enough, you will run a valve into a piston. So just take your time doing this. Make sure you have no slack between the crank pulley, the front cam pulley, the rear cam pulley, and all the slack has to end up down by the tensioner. All right, now at this point, you wanna make sure your timing marks line up, top of the crank gear, top of the cam gears up there. Once that is done, you're gonna pull your grenade pin. Your belt is now tensioned. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn the crank bolt over a couple times, rotate the engine around clockwise, you want, like I said, you always want to keep the slack side on this side. So when you rotate the engine, always rotate it clockwise. I'm going to rotate this around a couple times. Make sure that my timing marks still line up and make sure nothing's, you know, obviously binding up. All right, now at this point, I'm going to bolt this uh, half of the motor mount back on over top of the water pump pulley. Um, I put my hardware back in the holes just so uh, I can keep track of some of this stuff because there is a decent amount of hardware you got to remove as you guys found out if you're uh, following along at home. All right, now at this point, I'm going to reinstall the uh, the body half of the motor mount. So because mine was bad, I got to transfer this bracket over to the new motor mount. And uh, once I get that bracket transferred over, I got to go uh, wiggle this thing back into place underneath the computer. Uh, once I get the three bolts in the body and the two bolts in the bracket going to the engine block, um, I got a few uh, you know little wiring harnesses over here by the computer that I got to clip back into place. Uh, you know, put the the four bolts back into the computer to you know secure the computer back down. So I got the computer all bolted down. Um, I still have this bolt here loose to uh, to get the power steering pump you know back in place. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the radiator radiator with coolant. Uh, to do that, I got one of these fancy um, vacuum filling units. I'm probably going to shoot a video on it in the future, but uh, basically. Fill the radiator as you would normally would. This just ensures that I have no air pockets in my system. Like I said, I'll probably shoot a video on it in the future. All right, after you get coolant in the motor, next thing you want to do is check the water pump. Make sure the water pump's not up here leaking. Um, really, ideally, you should put coolant back in it before you even put the timing belt on. 
That way, if it leaks coolant, you don't have to pull the timing belt back off. Um, with this vacuum fill system that I have, I was able to put vacuum on the system and verify that the system held vacuum. So if it held vacuum, it's gonna hold pressure. If it holds pressure, it's not gonna leak. All right, lower timing covers back on. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, first of all, make sure the key is still in the end of the crankshaft. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is put this little piece on. Don't forget it. So if you look at it, it has a bit of a bevel to it and the bevel actually faces out. So it's kind of uh, cupped like this just a little bit when you look at it. So the, the cup side faces out. Take the balancer, put the balancer on. Like so. Like I said, just make sure you don't lose your key because uh, that would suck. Oh baby. All right. So get your uh, get your persuader in here because uh, this isn't going to be easy. At least when you're 140 pounds. I'm sure doing it on the floor, that is absolutely miserable. And I truly feel for you guys. That's why I bought a lift. Once you have the balancer bolted on, the, uh, the bottom of the engine and torque down. Uh, come back up to the top, put the two uh, timing belt covers on the front and the rear. Once you get the two timing belt covers on, then you can go ahead and bolt on the uh, serpentine belt tensioner. Um, and then, you know, kind of start getting the belt back in place. Obviously you have to uh, get the power steering pump bolted back up as well before you can put the belt on. But you can't bolt the uh, serpentine belt tensioner up until the upper timing covers are on. All right, boys, give everything a once over. Everything's back together with the exception of the uh, wheels and tires and the splash shield and you know some stupid stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and run it. See what we get. It's kind of a uh, pass or fail, you know, true or false, it's either right or wrong. So obviously I've got some other stuff I gotta do. You know, I gotta make sure the coolant's bled out. Um, I gotta add a little bit of power steering fuel fluid because you guys saw I puked it all over the place in there. I gotta clean up the engine a little bit just, you know, because I puked power steering fluid all over the place in there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna throw the wheel and tire back on it. Um, you know, put the splash shield back in it. If you guys can figure out how to put a timing belt in, I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to put in a splash shield. Uh, so as always guys, if you guys like the video, Hit like. If you want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.